be in fellowship with us this morning, but we come to you straight into your home, wherever you may be, on whatever device you are watching us from this morning. We know that we are still your church and that you are being blessed in this very moment. I would be remiss this morning if we do not pray. So where you are, please stand, raise your hands to the Lord our God, because right now in this week, in the past two weeks, we have received death notification after death notification. We have received funeral notification after funeral notification. The house of the Lord has not escaped some of our most faithful partners transitioning to glory over the last two weeks. And today, our hearts go out to our families. Our prayers go up for our families. In this very moment, in this morning hour, just before we started our, our service, we heard of the passing of Marshila Andrew, and we share our condolences. So many of our family have transitioned already. Our hearts are, 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 are in pain. We are, we are sad at this moment, but we know where our hope comes from. So if you've lost loved ones at home, raise your hands as we pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that in this very moment, we pray for those that need your comfort the most. We pray for those that are in tears this morning, in pain this morning, whose loved ones have transitioned to glory. We thank you, Father God, that in this very moment, your strength is coming into their lives. Your strength is coming upon their hearts. May the peace of heaven, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, surround them now. Take them to your bosom, O Lord. Bring them close to you. Let the Spirit of the Lord minister to them that you are their comforter and their helper. You are their strength now and forevermore. We send your power to their homes. Where there's brokenness, you are our Jehovah Rapha, the most healer divine. We pray for your healing touch right now. Where there's pain, bind up the pain and the brokenness. Bind up the broken hearts, O Lord, minister to them by your peace and by your love. May the people of the Lord come and surround our families. May the people of the Lord, O Lord, show their love, show their encouragement, show them strength in this very moment. We stay the hand of death against your people. We stay the hand of sickness, illness, and disease. We pray against the spirit of infirmity now in the mighty name of Jesus. From the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, we apply the healing balm of Gilead and we pray, Father, that restoration and life is found in your people. Strength to them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Peace be upon you, family. Peace be upon you. Please call your pastors. Let them know. If any of our family members have transitioned, those that are unwell, call your pastors. We are here to pray. We are here to minister. We are here to seek the face of the Lord together. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. As Elder Chomotso said to us this morning, hopefully next week we will be back in the house of the Lord. Pray with us. Believe with us. Trust God with us. We are praying that tonight we will get some good news from our president. We hope that the next week we will truly be in fellowship with one another. I'm going to continue on with why the church. A few weeks back, two weeks back, I spoke about the God of the mission. This morning I want to speak about the people of the mission. And it's apt because in the last two weeks, we've had to be people that are on mission for the Lord our God. The last two weeks, our country has been facing terrible chaos, struggle, turmoil at a level we have not seen since our democracy was birthed a few years back. And it is called on the church, it is called on you and I as sons and daughters of the Most High God to be people of mission. The theme is yet again, build your church. May it be the anthem of Siloam, Lord, build your church. We are tired of global pandemics. We are tired of lockdowns. Yes, I understand we are not unwise. So we will not say that the regulations are unwise. But we are tired. Because so far what we have seen is that the church has been impacted severely. But let me say this again, family. The anthem of the church is this. Build your church. In the midst of our struggles, O oh Lord... Build your church. Matthew 16, 18, 
the New King James says, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Throw your hands up where you are. Say, Lord, my name is Adrian. Lord, my name is Homozo. Lord, my name is Millie. Build your church on my confession. Build your church on my life and on my giftings and on my calling, O oh Lord. Build your church and I know that the gates of hell will not prevail. So we shut the doors of the gates of hell. We shut the gates of hell in the name of Jesus and we decree and we declare that through our lives the Lord will build his church. We shut the onslaught of, the, of hell against God's people. We cut it off from your home and from your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to say this to you this morning yet again. The church of God is alive and well in unprecedented times. There is still place for the church of God within the fabric of society. And its impact cannot be underestimated. God speaks through, the, through his church and we are his voice in a secularized world that has slowly removed the language of faith from its vocabulary. Yes, the world has removed the language of faith. A few months ago, our very president, I don't know if it was a slip of the tongue. I don't know if it was a joke to be made. But he greeted us in one of the family meetings in the name of the government. That is church talk, my brothers and my sisters. That is how we say we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The secularized world has taken our faith language and it has tried to twist it. It has tried to, to defile it, but we are saying no longer and no more. The church is made up of imperfect vessels, imperfect people from imperfect places. We all have imperfect pasts. Our very presence may be imperfect and our future will probably be imperfect. However imperfect we may be, the creator of the universe and yet personal savior uses the imperfect to perfect his mission through the power of the church. God, the infinite God, the omnipotent God, the omniscient God, omnipresent God calls out to us every day to take his mission and his purpose in a world that has rejected him. My brothers and my sisters, he calls you, he calls myself, he calls our bishop, Mamnila, he calls the pastors, the evangelists, the apostles, whoever it may be. You may not have a title next to your name, but he calls you. And he calls you to advance his purpose. He calls you to advance his mission. He calls you to advance the calling of the Lord upon your life. Yes, he will use you. Yes, he will use you in spite of where you come from. In spite of what you have done, he will use you. It is Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5 to verse 8, the New King James Version. He says, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am I, send me. May you this morning raise your life before the Lord. And may you say, Lord, send me. What is the purpose of the mission? I was trying to look at what is a definition of mission and missionary work. And I came up with a short definition. It says, impacting popular culture through the power of the kingdom culture. Impacting popular culture through the power of kingdom culture. How do we know this? Acts 13 and 47 says, For so the Lord has commanded us. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. I want to say this. You and I are called by the kingdom culture to impact our popular culture. How do we do this? We bring others to Christ, deliver others from a life of sin, restore the image of God in a sinful and evil world. We build the community of faith that he has called us to be part of. We advance the purpose of the church. So what is the purpose yet again? 
to impact popular culture through the power of the kingdom culture, my brothers and my sisters. But what are the characteristics of the people of the mission? You and I, we are the people of the mission. So what are our characteristics? What are we supposed to be? How are we supposed to look? How do we define who we are? How do we define the people that is on mission for the Lord our God? Yes, I'm calling this church. I'm calling you that are watching us this morning to understand that we are people of the mission. We are on mission. We cannot allow chaos to rule in our country. We cannot allow corruption to rule in our country. We cannot allow sin and sinfulness to devour the people on this planet and the people of God that you and I are called to. So the characteristics of the people of the mission are as follows. We are number one, faithful and we are faithful. We are faithful and we are faithful. We know Jesus and we want others to know him too. I want to say, over the last year and a half, all we've heard from the church is complaint after complaint. All we've heard from the collective voice of the church is, please let us back into our buildings. Please allow us to gather in our fellowship. I say again, the koinonia, the fellowship of the saints in gathering is important. We understand that. That is where the church is built. But brothers and sisters, we were not just called for the four walls of a building. We were called to be faithful. The faith that we were taught, the faith that we received Sunday after Sunday, when we could be in the house of the Lord, it is that faith that must come alive in the world that we are in. We are faithful and we are faithful. We know Jesus and we want others to know him too. Number two, we are teachable. People of the mission are teachable. They crave new learning opportunities. We seek out mentors. We depend on others and we ask advice. We are teachable. What have you been taught? What have you learned over this last year and a half? How have you empowered yourself over the last year and a half? What have you been taught from the Word of God? And what have you been taught from the school books out there? What have you read over the last year and a half? How teachable have you been over the last year and a half? I told you a few months ago already, I've learned so many things just by using Google and just by using YouTube. Things I didn't know I've had to add to my knowledge base. We have to be teachable. We have to be teachable. We have to learn. Number three, we are people of humility. We are prepared to do what others won't or can't do. How powerful is that this morning? We are prepared to do what others won't or can't do. So what does that mean? We stop complaining. We stop complaining. We stop saying, I hope somebody can go and keep people accountable. I hope there's a group of people that can keep the government accountable. You are the person. You are the righteousness of God. And through humility, we will do what others won't or can't do. Number four, we are people of effectiveness and efficiency. They, we have a strong spiritual track record and a firm service lifestyle. How do we know that our church, our Bishop Mamnila this year, grad, uh, uh, um, celebrating 41 years of ministry, we have a strong spiritual track record. We are people of effectiveness. What you see coming from the house this morning are people that have learned to be effective and efficient. People that have learned how to bring about the fellowship of God and the fellowship of God's people over a technic technological place and a technological platform. And here we are being effective in your life. Because we have a strong spiritual track record. We have a strong, firm service lifestyle. We are here to serve. We are here to serve. Over the last couple of days, we've already had five funerals. We are here to serve our families. 
over the last couple of days, we have reached out by what we have given to reach for those that have nothing in this very moment. Number five, availability. We understand that life offers many of us countless options. But weighing it up and risking criticism, we prioritize the mission. We are available. We make ourselves available. We say to the Lord, if you can use anything, you can use me. If we say to the Lord this morning, and I pray that you will say with me, you will throw your hands up with me where you are right now. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, do not do it without me. Don't move without me. Don't perform the miracles without me. Don't do your signs and your wonders without me. My life is in your hands, so use me. My life is in your hands, so direct me. My life is in your hands, so guide me. Guide me to where the place must be, where I give myself over to you. And I'm a person and a people of the mission. Whatever you do, don't do it without me. Be bold, tell the Lord. Be bold. Whatever you're about to do, don't do it without Siloam. Don't do it without our people. Don't do it without my family. Don't do it without my money, my generosity. The people of the mission, we frame the demands of the world within a godly and biblical worldview. That's why I'm saying to you, stop complaining. Stop, stop arguing. Frame the world with a biblical worldview. The struggles, the issues, the problems, frame it from a biblical worldview. When you wake up in the morning, take your Bible and say, Lord, the first thing I want to see is what your word says I need to see. The first thing I need to understand is what is the biblical worldview of this chaos and what am I supposed to do? Because the Bible says that the creation was in chaos, but the Spirit of the Lord hovered on all chaos. And when he spoke, he said, let there be and there was. So use my life, use my voice. Let me be so, O oh Lord, meditating on your word that when I speak, it will be. People of the mission, live interdependent with the body of Christ. And cares for its well-being. You cannot do this by yourself. You can't live by yourself. You can't think it's okay not to come to the house of the Lord when church is open. It's okay not to be in the home fellowship. It's okay not to be in the worship. You have to live interdependent with the body of Christ. And then you must care for the body of Christ. Number three, you have to be sensitive to the negative experiences of others and committed to positive change. Sensitive to the negative experiences of others. Committed to positive change. We want to see change in this country. We want to see transformation in this country. We have to be sensitive. Number four, living in the full reality of the power of the Spirit. Listen to this. You and I must live in the full reality of the power of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and we must be fully manifested in the fruit of the Spirit. We cannot live outside of the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We cannot live outside of the work of the Holy Spirit. We cannot live outside of the power of the Holy Spirit. That is why the giftings must be released by the power of the Lord Most High. I pray that the Spirit release giftings to you and your family right now in Jesus' mighty name. Gifts release, whatever it may be. Gifts release and know that the giftings are tempered by the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, the nine fruit of the Spirit. May it flourish in our lives. Number five, strong conviction. We must have a strong conviction that God is always in control of every situation. And they are fully yielded to his leading. It may seem chaotic, but God is in control. 
It may seem like we don't know if we're coming or going, but God is in control. It may seem like nobody knows what's happening in this world, but God is in control. Shout out now, God, you are in control. You are in control of my every being. You're in control of every situation. You're in control of every step I take. You're in control of every thought that I think. You're in control of every action of my life. You are in control. Where do we stand then as people of the mission? Where do we stand? We need yielded and surrendered people. We need generous people. We need courageous people. We need resilient people. We need gifted people. We need peaceable people. And we need righteous people. That's what we need. That's what this world needs. Right now there is in Pretoria a very important meeting. Pastor Ad Bosov has called all of the pastors Our very own bishop is in attendance in that meeting. We are not this week going to say it and look at ourselves and join our own little clubs and say that, listen, we have no voice. Right now, men of God and women of God are meeting to plot the way forward. We raise our hands and we say, Lord, lead our pastors. Lead our men and our women of God. Give them wisdom because we need courageous people. We need courageous, resilient, gifted, peaceable, righteous people. May what they decide today and speak about today, may it be filled with righteousness and may we speak with one voice. The church of God cannot be divided in this moment. We have to be united. As we close out this message this morning, I read to you Matthew chapter 9, 35 to 38. It says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. To be like Jesus means to do what Jesus did. He was always on mission, and so must we. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Jesus was moved with compassion. May the compassion of the Lord move you right now. May the compassion of the Lord for those that are lost move your spirit right now. May you and I be like Jesus, going into all cities and towns, teaching, preaching, and also performing miracles, healing. I release over Siloam this morning the sense of sensitivity to be in tune and aligned to the Spirit of the Lord. Compassion is in us. Compassion is upon us. We are people of the mission. We will do what Jesus did. We will be like Jesus. We will say yes to his mission. We will say, yes, Lord, you can use us. Yes, Lord, you can use this church. Yes, Lord, you can use our ministry. Yes, Lord, we want to be people of the mission. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this morning, O Lord, that we are equipped with all of heaven. I pray this morning, O Lord, that you will give us the sensitivity to your spirit. That you, O Lord, will help us open our eyes to the calling. Help us open our eyes to your purpose and to your plan. We are people of the mission. Father, I release yielded and surrendered people. I release generous people, courageous people, resilient people, 
gifted people, peaceable people, and righteous people into the mission, into the harvest. We are co-laborers with you, and we thank you that your hand is upon our lives. Use us, use this church. Use your people. Unite your voice. Unite the church around one voice, O oh God. Re unite us around your righteous and holy calling and help us to do your purpose and your plan.